Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Freedom Friday, guys. Let's get this morning going. I'm excited, I'm excited, I promise you. So as you are coming on and we are getting this morning started, I just gotta tell you, I'm super excited today because guess what? I get to rock my sister, one of my sister's custom tees. And I know we've been like, okay, so what's going on? What's going on with this thing? It's Tiffany's custom tees. And yes, you might see a little green around me, but I need to, to, that lucky charm to show. So guess what? On this morning, I'm going to just call it out and I'm going to say I'm Frank's lucky charm. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. New day, new day. Yes. Hey, Yvonne. Good morning, love. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Patrice. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Nora. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah. And guys, you can get your custom tea from Tiffany um, Custom Teas. Tiffany is my sister. She launched her business just a, a few weeks ago. Actually, it was the beginning of February. So, um, you know, this month of March, we have all of the St. Patrick's Day stuff going on. So yes, I'm rocking it. I changed my little background. So you might see some green behind me, but that's okay. Cause I wanted to make sure you could see the lucky charm. So good morning, good morning. You can follow her on Instagram at Tiffany underscore custom underscore tees. So go ahead, reach out, get your custom tea so you can rock it. Oh, I see she posted it right there um, in the thread. So good morning, everybody. I am Dr. K and I am here for Freedom Friday. I am the founder of Freedom by Design, only by God's grace because he planted that thing in my belly. I'm excited and we were able to birth it. Thank you, Jesus. Not by myself though, not by myself. So, hey, I know you're probably saying it's Friday and it's 7.30 in the morning. Why is she excited? Because my sister Avril just brought a whole word on the God Zone. And if you are not a part of the God Zone, I'm just going to keep saying it. I'm going to need you to get up in the morning about a quarter to six so you can plug in and listen as we share scripture, short testimony, song. You get to reflect. It is an open platform. And no, it's not on Zoom. It's on the telephone. So you don't have to worry about them seeing you if you're not up and ready. So good morning. Good morning, Avril. If you would drop in the chat, the information for God's own. And thank you, my sister, for bring, um, being obedient this morning and bringing that word because it was a whole word for us. So yes, yes. Good morning, Dr. Abigail. So guys, let's go ahead and jump on in. So I know you're probably saying, Katrina, it's March. It's March madness. But you're talking about you got football. Well, hey, you guys know that, well, you may or may not know, I am, I was a basketball player myself. But as an adult, I became a football mom. As a result of that, football, especially in my house, we live, eat, sleep football. So it's faith, football, and family. And we rock it in that order <laughs> a lot of times. So being a football person, being raised in a football family, living in a football oriented, and yeah, y'all see my dolphins over here. Um, so don't hate, and next time when you get to present or speak, you can put your team, but our team is the Miami Dolphins through and through, we gonna ride with them. But it's something about, and my son, as we were, um, as he was growing up, he was a uh, quarterback. So when he got to college, they changed his position and he became a receiver. But nonetheless, as my son was growing up, I really began to study and understand. I had to learn the game of football. I needed to learn what the penalties meant. I needed to learn certain things so that I could be able to, you know, know what was going on, especially, you know, we're out there all this time cheering and doing what we need to do. And what I identified, and I'm going to go back a little bit to Wednesday because when, on Wednesdays, we have a camp group. I host a camp group of women and it's a time for us to listen to um, a word and we're able to once again share but in a in a environment where we can be um, ourselves we don't have to worry about anything so we talked a little bit about um, what, what I'm gonna pull in so have you ever been just worrying about something? You know, you're worrying about your issues. You're trying to fix the stuff yourself. You you going to different people or you treat you going to different people asking them what to do. And, you know, it's, it's something about our the coach of our football team, because we all are all on the football team. If we don't know, he is waiting for us 
to listen to what he has taught us. And the thing about it is he don't just throw us out on the field without any practice. He gets us prepared and ready. But a lot of times when we get out in life, even though God has equipped us, even though he's given us everything we need, because he gave us the playbook, we need the playbook. And he we have to study. We can't just jump out on the field and say, okay, I'm ready to play. No, we have to learn the X's and the O's. We have to learn what happened. We have to be able to do what he says, not the way we want to do it. But sometimes we put other things before him. We um, try to, you know, self, um, self, Medicaid, I would say, with relationships, with business, with habits, with self-gratification. Sometimes we even turn our hobbies and I kind of merge that into habits. And God is like, but I didn't tell you to do that. That's that's not what this thing looks like. And this morning and I, I was sitting and meditating. I'm like, Lord, tell me how you want me to, t- to, to do this thing. And he was like, you know, what happens in life is just like on the football field. When you do something you're not supposed to do, the official is going to throw a flag. And that happens just the same in life. When we are going down a path or we don't follow the rules that God has set out, when we don't do what he's asked us to do, he's going to throw a flag on the field. Now, as a football person, the one thing we do not want to see for our team is a flag on the field, especially on us. So what I've identified is that if we're on offense and the White Hat, who is the um, the, the official overall or the official, so to speak, when he throws the flag, we already know that flag is on us because that's where he's standing. He's standing behind us to be able to see everything. So when his flag comes out, it's like, oh, Lord, you know, what did we do? You know, you caught us. And it's almost the same in life. You're like, okay, Lord, why am I going in circles? Why do I feel empty? Why, why do I feel stuck? Why am I just um, doing this thing over and over? And he's like, because it's a flag on the play. It's a flag on the field because you're doing it the way you want to do it. You're not doing it the way that I've called you to do it. I was like, okay. And sometimes he'll even give us an instant replay so we can go back, reevaluate it in our mind and, and reflect. But some of us don't like the instant replay because the instant replay shows us what we actually did it shows us us it's that mirror of self-reflection you know it's easy to celebrate when other people are getting the flags thrown on them but when that flag is on us it does not feel good so this morning i said okay lord i I need you to help me bring this thing i need you to help me say it the way that it came through my mind and he was like well let's talk about some of the types of penalties or flags that might be thrown so that first one that came up was encroachment Now, encroachment, and understand, for every flag that's thrown, there is a penalty that comes with it. So you're not, he's not just going to stop you from doing a thing, and then there's not a consequence with it. Because understand, that's the building process. That's us being in practice. That's us strengthening. That's us getting better. Encroachment, when a defensive player crosses the line of scrimmage before the ball is snapped. Now, as a result of that, that's a five-yard penalty. And I want you to think. Have you done something before God gave you approval to do it? Before he said, go ahead. Now, a lot of times he'll give us a vision, you know, we'll feel it. Or have you not done a thing when he said to do it? He's shown you what to do, but you still, you're like, okay, I'm going to do it this way. And he says, you can't move until the ball is snapped. Now it's the flag on the play because you didn't jump offside. And I didn't tell you to do that. You didn't jump too quick. So now you're over and you need to come back. And as a result, now your team, you are going to get a five-yard penalty. So when you were supposed to be moving in that thing, no, 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 you're not moving forward. Forward. I'm going to hold you right here. I'm going to give you that five-yard penalty so it's going to look different. Girl, you better say it, oh, um, Avril, obedience. It comes all right back down to being obedient, doing it his way when he says not our way. Then I said, okay, Lord, give me another one. So he gave me holding. Now, holding can be offensive holding or it could be defensive holding. So when it's offensive holding, that player is using his arms to prevent a defensive player from tackling the ball carrier. As a result, 10-yard penalty. Now, there's a way for us to tackle. There's a way for us to do things. And he's prescribed that way in the Holy Book, in the Bible. Y'all see it right here over my shoulder. He's given us the playbook. He's taught us and practiced how to deal. But when we try to be slick, when we try to be elusive and we try to do it the easy way and take shortcuts when we're, again, not disobedient, 
bam, here comes that flag. And guess what? That's a 10 yard penalty. Again, we got holding defensive holding. When that defensive player tries to tackle or hold a player other than the ball carrier. That happens when we lose focus, when we're distracted, when we're all over the place. Instead of us keeping our eyes fixed on what he's telling us to do, we all over the place. And as a result, bam, five yard penalty, but guess what? Automatic first down. So now it's like, dang, Lord, you know, you this this set me back. And he like, no, this didn't set you back. You set you back. Your disobedience set you back. You trying to do a shortcut set you back. I didn't tell you that you were going to be able to walk directly across the street and talk to the neighbor. I told you to walk around the subdivision. And then when the neighbor comes out, then you do that. So we got to follow the playbook. That's the importance, just like football players. They can't just get out there on the field. They got to go to practice. They have spring football. They have summer training because they got to learn the playbook. We got to learn the playbook. We got the playbook. He isn't hiding it from us. And we have access to the coach we don't just have to talk to the offensive coordinator or the defensive coordinator we go straight to the head coach he is allowing us access to him so we don't have to worry but when that flag is thrown guess what the thing is football is a team sport so it doesn't just affect you it's affecting those that you're covering. It's affecting those that you're touching. And that's why God is so serious about it. That's why he's going to give you that penalty because it's not about you. It's about so many more people than you. Next flag, next penalty, pass interference. Now this is a judgment call. And I'll tell you sometimes I'm in my feelings when I, we're talking real football on that pass interference because I'm like, no, I ain't see it. I don't like it. It's usually when a defensive um, player makes contact with the intended receiver before the ball gets to him. So it's a catchable ball, but he couldn't get it. So now as a result, guess what happened? It is a spot foul. So wherever it happens, and normally that's going to be a bomb. So he is, that's probably a post corner where he is already going to the end zone. And now it's a spot foul. So wherever it happens, that's where they're going to put the ball. And that happens when you're like, okay, Lord, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to move. And he like, mm -mm. and you're looking like, well, wait a minute. You elevated them and I was more prepared. I was more equipped. He was like, I elevated them or I advanced them because they were obedient. It wasn't about how equipped you were. It's about your e obedience. You ever been in a situation and you see somebody and they get promoted, they get a thing and you're like, well, dog, how did they get it? I went to school longer than them. I have more experience than them. Are you more obedient? Because God isn't rewarding degrees. He's not rewarding accolades. He's rewarding obedience. He's rewarding faith. Are you going to be faithful when he gives it to you? Huh? Come on now. Then the next one, another one that's near and dear to my heart, intentional grounding. Y'all know my baby was a quarterback until he got to college. So this one is when the quarterback tries to avoid being tackled and he just throws the ball away in an area where there's no receiver that could potentially catch the ball what happens in that is a loss of a down so god is saying do you have can you afford to lose time and he's saying i don't want you to lose time because losing time means that you miss one of my children you miss somebody you were supposed to speak to you miss doing something again it comes right back to obedience rutho you better say it it's time to say yes to the dress right now lord yes i got you whatever it is yes use me whatever it is coach put me in the game and i'm going to follow the playbook i'm not going to try to create my own rules i'm not going to try to outshine anybody else i'm not trying to be the mvp and make other people feel bad i want to be your most valuable player so when me and you are talking it's about me and you it's about you using me and that's the beauty he can restore us guys he can restore us so now i told you you know on wednesday we had a whole a, a whole word and it, it tied in with this and i had to go back and grab my notes that thing was so good to me on wednesday you know it's good when you're taking notes and your notes starts being all of this hey i'm not even i don't even have the digital i just had to pull my notes out because my sister bernadette she talked about the fact that i want you and i'm gonna paraphrase it so I, i'm not gonna definitely say it the same way she said it and i'm putting it in football terms she she talked about a vision that she had received where she was out in the in the forest it was beautiful alpine trees and all of that great stuff and she saw snow but when she saw a cross but when she saw 
the, the snow and the cross, there were footprints in the snow, but the footprints were not the way we see them, just vertical walking straight. The footprints were side sideways. So when she um, talked about this thing during our Bible study, during our camp group, it hit me different because she also talked about the fact that sometimes instead of us looking straight, we got to look to the side. And on a football field, if you ever watch football and you will understand when the quarterback, when we're on the offense of side of the ball and it's time for us to snap the quarterback has to look over to the left and not only will the quarterback look over they're looking for the coach to see what they're saying because the head coach is guy he's over there and they have to stop because they've gotten the play they ran out I used to get so frustrated like they got the play why you ain't give them the play when they were on the sideline they got the play but sometimes the play has to change because you got the head coach over here on the sideline and you have your offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator the Holy Ghost and Jesus right up there in the box and sometimes they see something different so when you got to the line of scrimmage they were like hold up back up everybody take a look we're about to change this thing then you start seeing those signs those visions those symbols you start feeling something deep in your belly so God is saying it's time for you to move just like football when they look over you notice everybody look over to the left and now everybody in the stands we're looking over to the left too so sometimes God is saying hey stop Look, it's time for you to listen to the coach. You got the playbook. You should have studied it. So now I'm going to tell you what you need to do. I'm going to send you back and you have to think about, okay, what did the Lord say in Luke? What did the Lord say in Matthew? What did the Lord say in Proverbs? Because you're going to be able to, you're going to need to have that word. You're going to need those scriptures. So one thing that we talked about at, on Wednesday when she was explaining this and that made so much sense to me, I'm like, the distractions are going to come. We're going to be looking, especially in football, you got noise, you got all of these different things, but you have to have your focus. You can't di get distracted. There is a certain thing that we're supposed to do. There's a play he's called. We have to execute that play. We cannot be distracted by the things around us. He is saying, hey, this is the play. This is what you're going to do. You have to do your assignment. I can't be the quarterback and I'm trying to block. That's not my assignment. Each one of us has an identified, come on, Holy Ghost. We got an identified role on this team. We got to play our part. Everybody can't be the quarterback. There's one quarterback. Everybody can't be a receiver. Everybody can't be a tight end. We have to play our part because in us playing our part, that means guess what happens? Because our coach, God, he's always going to do what? He's going to win. So we don't have to worry. If we play our part, we're always going to win no matter what it looks like. And sometimes family in life, just like in football, we have to make an adjustment because understand God is able to see things from a whole different vantage point. He's not looking right here. He's not finite. He's infinite in what he sees. He's infinite in his wisdom. So we have to make the adjustment. We can't get mad, but that's why we have to study and show our, to show ourselves approved. We got to know the book. We got to know the play because when the adjustment comes, it's at the line of scrimmage. So I got to be ready. I can't be asking people, okay, what play was that? No, he is saying, you got to study. You got to be ready. So when I make the adjustment or when I make the shift, you're ready to move. You're ready to make that thing happen. And sometimes family, it's just for you. Sometimes it's not for everybody else. So they won't understand, but you got to follow the play. You got to do what he has asked you to do. When it's time to shift, you have to shift. And another thing I got was, you know, sometimes we try to move too fast. That's when we'll get that encroachment call. Sometimes we'll jump. That's that offside call. We got to be careful because we don't need those penalties. We don't need no five yard penalties. You know, sometimes we can lose a whole game because of the penalties. You're doing it, but you're doing it the way you want to do it. He wants us to just do it his way, his speed, not our speed, his time, not our time. We have to make sure that we're able to look on camp on Wednesday. You know, Bernadette talked about the fact we're still going to get to where we need to get to. Sometimes we have to shift the way we do it. So we got to be flexible in that thing. We got to be ready to move. We got to be ready to adjust. And family on this morning, that thing was hitting me a little bit different. So I pray that my analogy, you were able to understand exactly the way he downloaded it to me because I was a little bit all over the place. But man, when I tell you 
that this thing, it has really been resonating with me. It has really been sticking with me because I want to do what he says. When he calls you to do a thing, you move. We have the playbook. We got to go to practice. That doesn't mean what well, you're saying, oh, well, church isn't open yet. Church don't have to be open. Practice happens right here in my house. Practice happens when I pick this up right here and I can read what thus saith the Lord. When I can have, I'll be, I'm going to be obedient. He's going to use me when I show, I study and show myself approved. Because guess what? It's not about me. It's about him. It's about me being obedient and doing what he's called me to do each and every time. We don't want flags on the field. I promise you, when we see those flags, we cringe. Like I said, we're diehard University of Miami, all about the you, y'all. And we're diehard Miami Dolphins. We don't want no flags. We want to be obedient. We want to move. We don't want to give the enemy on the other side of that line. We don't want to give them anything. So we are not trying to lose this thing with penalties. We want to stay focused. We want to be in practice. We want to listen to the coach. It's not time for you to be trying to audible. He didn't tell you to audible. You don't get that autonomy. You have to grow in that. So you don't get up to the line and change the play. He does that. We are not at that point. He is God all by himself. He don't need us audible and at the line of scrimmage. No, sir, no, ma'am. Look to the left and see what the coach is saying. Execute the play. Execute the play. Do what he has called us to do. Point blank, period. Family, I love you guys. I love you. I love you. It has been a great morning being with you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. We got to listen to the coach, Ruth, though, just period, point blank. So as I said, um, we will be back on Monday. Um, next Friday, I'm going to have a treat. So, you know, normally we have Wisdom Wednesday where we have a guest. I think I'm going to have a special guest on next Friday. So next Wednesday and Friday, we will have guests. So I'm excited about that. And again, um, my T-shirt I'm rocking is from my sister's, um, her T-shirt company, um, Tiffany Custom Tees. So again, Tiffany, you can drop the information right there in the chat. You can follow her on Instagram at Tiffany underscore custom underscore tees and get your tea. Like I said, I'm I'm rocking lucky. We all know that um, I'm blessed, I'm covered, and I'm favored, and my daddy loves me like none other. I'm his favorite child. But you know what? I said today I'm going to rock lucky because guess what? I'm Frank's lucky charm. How about that? Hey, I could call it the way I see it. Um, <laughs> the wind is coming out of my mouth. So Lord, I thank you for the word that you have given us on today. Lord, I pray that it has fallen on fresh ground, fresh ears. I pray that we can take it and we can run with it and use it the way that you see fit. God bless each and every one of you. Lord bless you. Continue to watch over us and keep us. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey, I see you, Frankie. I see you, Frankie. All hands. <laughs> I love you guys. You guys have a fantastic Friday. And if you're listening to this later, because we go on at 7.30 in the morning, wake up with us. Get up. Join us on the God Zone at 6 a.m. and then transition over um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to Freedom by Design Live with yours truly, Dr. K. But God Zone is Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Come and be blessed. There's no reason. In this season, we get the word every day. We don't have to wait on no Sunday. We don't have to wait on no Wednesday. We get the word every day because the Lord is downloading for us. So we're excited. We're going to continue to be obedient, be obedient, follow what he says, follow the playbook. God bless you guys. I love you. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.